Hello everyone, let me start by saying that this is our second Google Hangout, this time with Rafio Vanisian, the leader of opposition. Those who are uh, watching us have a chance to ask questions to the leader of Armenian opposition we, uh, and to the leader of Bar Revolution, as we say <laughs> in Armenia. Hello, Revolution. Bar Revolution. Bar yes, Bar Revolution, <laughs> yes. Just to give you a little background of what is happening here in Armenia, I think on February 18, Armenians went to the polls to elect their president for the first time in post-independent Armenian history. And now, based on official results, uh, almost 37% of the Armenian voters, uh, which is more than half a million people, voted for you. Rafi Oanichan. Even this number is huge. Uh, for a small country like Armenia, if we consider the fact that another 40,000 voted for someone else and who are not on the ballot or their, you know, ballots were considered invalid. And in short, this was really a huge number and, you know, but on the other hand, the Central Election Commission declared incumbent President Serge Sarkisian as the winner uh, with almost 58%. Uh, so you refused, you, you, uh, you were refusing to accept the results and uh, you started your movement and uh, you called on your supporters to protest against the official results and asked the incumbent president um, to hold at least second round between you and him. And, and now you're offering him power sharing uh, agreement to meet and to discuss how you can share the power with, with, with the president. And, but we know that the president, you know, still has no answer and, or, or he, he does not agree with you. We will be witnessing next Tuesday a very historic, very interesting event, parallel inauguration. And on the same day, President will have his own inauguration. You will have your own inauguration on Liberty Square, which is a famous place uh, now for every Armenian around the world. Everybody knows what is Liberty Square. Now, my first question to you Why did you refuse to accept the official results? Uh, I don't remember any other elections with the, the, that were observed with such scrutiny, and they had except for the first presidential election, of course. And, but there are also positive remarks uh, you know, from the observers and also leaders around the world you know, recognize these election results. Now, what's your answer? I think we locals know the answer. You talked about this many times, but let's talk about this for very good. For the people outside. Well, thank you, Mr. Tom Rosen. It's nice to be hanging out here with Radio Liberty, and uh, we welcome everybody around the world. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my approach uh, to the future of Armenia. Uh, there has never been, since 1991, the first presidential election after independence, uh, a transfer of authority uh, through elections. Armenia, for 21 years, uh, has not had a transition of authority through classical Western style elections. Number one, we lost so much in history. Uh, in the genocide in Western Armenia and the Ottoman Turkish Empire, we lost a, a million and a half Armenians. We lost our homeland. It was more than a genocide because we lost it. It was the killing of a homeland. Um, and yet, the Armenians were able to, uh, to survive, to dance on the face of adversity. Uh, and we were able to come back, to bounce back out of genocide and empire, 
uh, and we were able to hold our own in uh, in mountainous Karabakh and uh, and the and the valiant freedom loving people of the mountainous Karabakh Republic. Uh, who turned the tide on uh, the Stalin's divide and rule policy uh, at the time the Berlin Wall was coming down? They said, you know what? Uh, we want our own liberty. They deserve liberty uh, as much as uh, Kosovo and uh, East Timor and South Sudan. So the world has to get with it. And sui generis uh, is uh, is a distinction without a difference. No such thing as sui generis. Sui gen We're all different. Uh, but uh, the point is, we've lost so much in history. Uh, we are coming back. We demand our rights. Uh, on the eve of the 100th anniversary of the genocide. We demand our rights in Karabakh because they deserve to be recognized. They deserve that under the Montevideo Convention. But one thing we have to understand is as we knock on the world's door and say, justice, justice abroad, justice for the genocide, justice for our rights, we'll achieve that day. But we've got to deliver those very same rights to our own citizens, and we have not been able to do that. And uh, for the million and a half Armenians who've left Armenia brain drain, immigration over the last 21, 22 years, neither Turkey nor Azerbaijan, neither Russia nor the United States is at fault. We are, we've got to take responsibility for that. So this is a, a long introduction to say the following, that, um, uh, that uh, these elections, like many of the previous elections, were marred with falsification and fraud, uh, administrative resources, the use of, uh, of schools and hospitals and uh, and city halls and village uh, village buildings that belong to the public for private gain. Uh, soldiers were taken uh, by their commanders to for open voting, uh, and by and large, uh, there was a grave uh, endemic violation of the constitution, uh, where the Armenian uh, the vote of the Armenian people was stolen uh, from the uh, from our people, and that's why. Uh, I have not called for our people to protest, but the time has come for the Armenians to face the music, to face ourselves in the mirror and say, you know what, yeah, we're going to get justice from Turkey, we're going to get justice from Azerbaijan, they're going to recognize Mountainous Karabakh, but we've got to give justice to our own people. And uh, unfortunately, Mr. Sarkisyan and the ruling party, who have confused themselves with the state, they think l'état c'est moi, they think that uh, uh, they they represent uh, the state uh, and uh, the Armenian people surprised everybody. Two, three months ago, Mr. Tamraz, and you, I think, might attest to the fact that uh, people said, oh, it's not worth going to the polls, it's already decided, 20 years they've stolen the elections, uh, it's not worth it, and people are fatalistic, they're leaving the country, there's hopelessness, and the people believed. I believed in the people, the people believed in themselves, and from Yerevan to Gyumri and Vanazar to big cities and villages, we were able to, uh, in my opinion, uh, win the election. And even though we felt we won the election, we, I went uh, in the show of political culture to Mr. Sarkisian's office a couple of days after the election. I said, Mr. Sarkisian, uh, let's get real. If we want to salvage the future of our nation, to finally have a democratic rule of law state, not only under European standards, the Armenian constitutional standards. Let's go for a second round. You and me, you and me, Mr. Sarkisian, and let's present our foreign and domestic policy options to the people with respect and let them decide. He didn't want to do that. I said, okay, uh, if you don't want to do that, let's go for a new presidential election uh, and we'll, uh, we'll debate in public uh, and uh, it'll be the first time that we'll have a respectful debate. He didn't want it. He didn't even want a, a new parliamentary uh, election, a snap parliamentary election that would allow the people who are living now the greatest revival and rebirth and rejuvenation since 1988, uh, which was the year of the earthquake, the year of the Karabakh movement for liberty, the, the year that the quest for Armenian independence began uh, on Liberty Square, uh, and he didn't go for it. So I have very little uh, more to say. It's, it's up to him. In two, two days' time, on April 9th, uh, he will have uh, he will have his uh, little inauguration in the sports complex. I believe that if he puts his hand on the Bible in the Armenian Constitution uh, and he takes the oath, it will be a false oath. And if the Catholicos of all Armenians, Karakin, whom I respect, I'm a member of the church myself, blesses that uh, oath, that will be the blessing of a false oath, which is the most anti-Christian, anti-constitutional, anti-national measure that any Catholicos and any president can take. And meanwhile, we'll be on the square. We'll be on Liberty Square at noon on the 9th to take a note, not for Rafi and 
or not against Serge, but an oath for a new Armenia to say, we have returned to the world stage. I had the honor of raising the flag at the United Nations, and you were there yeah. in 1992, yeah. March 2nd. Uh, and to say that, you know what, uh, this is the Republic of Armenia. Uh, we have a constitution. We have the rule of law. And we demand justice for our own citizens. And we will say that on the square. Uh, we'll have a little bit of song and dance. We'll celebrate. And then at 6 o'clock, we will march. Now, we have applied to the city hall to march uh, along the streets of Yerevan next to the presidential palace, because that palace belongs to the Armenian people, not to me, not to Ser Sarkisem, but to the people. They refuse. So we will consult with the people. And at 6 o'clock, after our collective inauguration, the proclamation of New Armenia on the 9th, we will decide uh, where we're walking. And I think there we will see the Armenians from all around the world, the citizens of the Republic, from Artsakh, Karabakh, and from the diaspora coming together and say, saying, you know what? We've lost so much in history, but this time we cannot build a democratic state, a sovereign, social, uh, democratic state, which is the, the imperative of the Armenian constitution, if we're going to forge our own election. So we say no to, no to forgery, no to injustice, and if Mr. Sarkisian and the Catholicos of all Armenians want to be complicit in the forgery of the Armenian vote, uh, I will feel very sorry for that. The Armenian people are more important than any official. And now we, we have a lot of questions uh, sent to us through, you know, all kinds of uh, platforms, Facebook, you know, Twitter, every, okay. every possible Bring it channel. On. Now, Bring it on. Wait, let's start <laughs> with Zara Ghazaria. Okay, Zara. She's asking, dear Mr. Hovanisya, what do you think has actually changed in Armenia during the last weeks as a result of your efforts, which you have shown struggling, going on hunger strike, visiting regions, gathering thousands of people around you? So this is the question. Uh, thanks, Zara. Uh, where's Zara from? Do we know where she's from? No, actually, from? Okay. she's not. Safe. Well, the, the world is small, so it really doesn't matter where she's yeah. from because we're on a, we're on a little world and a little Armenia here. Um, thank you, Zara, for your question. Uh, it's hard for me to say. It's hard for me to say. It's more important what your opinion is. I'd like to hear your opinion uh, because uh, this sort of my initiative or this struggle of ours is much greater than than uh, than my name or, or, or Rafi, and you know my character very well. Uh, I think that the most important thing is for the, that the average citizen, uh, including you perhaps, uh, has figured out that, you know what, uh, I belong to this country and I can make a difference. And I'm going to come out of my little uh, apartment or my little uh, coffee shop and uh, I'm going to make a difference. And I think that that fatalism that for 20 or 25 years was part of the Armenian psyche has become overcome. And it's this movement is far greater than Rafi. I mean, uh, I might be here or not be here tomorrow or the next day, but I hope, it is my hope and my trust, that, uh, that the Zaras of the world and the young Armenians and the old Armenians from Armenia to diaspora will understand that uh, Armenia has returned to the world stage, that we belong to Armenia, and that we can make a difference. And I feel there's been a, sh a shift in consciousness. There's been a shift in civic activity. There's been an understanding that, okay, well, Rafi might have been a part of this, but it's, it's about me now. It's about me as the citizen of Armenia. And uh, that, that's the part of this great saga uh, that gave, gives me the greatest pride. Because Armenia is not only a piece of land. I mean, I, will, I will kiss the flag, I kiss the soil. Yeah. My grandparents were survivors of the genocide. And uh, we hope to have a normalization of relations with, uh, with Turkey ultimately, but based on a respect of our history, based on a compensation and a right of return to our homeland. But ultimately, we too uh, have to take control of our own destiny. And I think the greatest thing that perhaps uh, the Armenian people have achieved in the last three months is that uh, the average Armenian citizen says, uh, yeah, um, I'm not going to curse the darkness. I'm not going to sit at home and complain. And this is my country and I'm going to take part in the revival of the Republic of Armenia. And that's the greatest source of pride for me. Um, now there is another, there are a number of questions about, a lot, I, I mean, about what are you going to do on April 9th and what steps you are going to undertake next. So um, let me just uh, list some of the names. Khoren Samvedian and Albert Alexanian in particular. 
they are asking these questions. And well, they, thanks, they want to know. Well, and I'd, I'd love to hear what Florian Albert, Albert have to say. I, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have a secret mission. Yes. Uh, I'm someone who um, has a, a strategy, a plan, but I'm also a human being, so I have a little emotion in me. Uh, yeah. But I also know where, where I'm going. It's not a matter of me anymore. And I'd like to hear your opinion. But as far as we know, as we look forward uh, to April 9th, two days from now, uh, at noon sharp, at noon, uh, we will have we will be on Liberty Square, where the movement for unification between Armenia and Karabakh, for uh, freedom, for sovereignty, uh, for independence began. Uh, it's a it's a square that belongs to the Armenian people around the world. It's a, a square of great energy, and I think it will be full with quality and quantity. Uh, uh, at noon, uh, we will take a, a collective oath, I believe, uh, and uh, we will have a, the Constitution in our hand. We will not confuse um, the Church with the State. The ch Church is separate. The Church should be higher or separate from the State. Unfortunately, that is not always the case. The Church sometimes has become an instrument of the State, and as a son of the Church, I'm critical of the Church and its leadership for allowing it to be an instrument of State. But anyway, I think that we will have an oath. Uh, we will have a couple of a uh, couple hours of, uh, of of song and dance. We'll congratulate ourselves on the inauguration of new Armenia, on the promulgation of the new republic, uh, which is not Rafi, and is, which is not again Serge. It's for the future of Armenia. And then, as I said, at about five or six o'clock, we will stand together with the citizens of Armenia, political leaders, uh, freedom fighters who have given their lives for uh, the liberation of. Uh, of the Armenian patrimony, and we will uh, we will walk. Uh, apparently, the police and the authorities have a little bit of a phobia. They have refused our uh, request to walk by the uh, uh, presidential mansion. That belongs to the people. As of April 9th, it will not belong to Sarah Sarkis anymore. Are you saying that you're gonna, you know, we're gonna walk? Oh yeah, we're we're gonna walk, but uh, we'll figure out where we're gonna walk. As you know, in the last several months, uh, we have sought to cultivate a, uh, a culture of respect between citizen and policemen. Mm -hmm. uh, we rule out any violence. If there's any uh, tension or any altercation or confrontation, it will be on the part of the authorities who, after April 9th, in my view, will be de facto authorities. They will not be de jure authorities. And uh, people in their entourage are, are already talking about uh, possible coup d'etat. So the coup d'etat, they did the coup d'etat. February 18th, stealing the vote from the Armenian body politic. They're the ones who are outside the law, outside the Constitution. So I urge them not to use against the people uh, the, 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 the uh, lexicon of illegitimacy. They will be illegitimate de facto authorities, and whoever takes that false oath will have to bear the consequences. And uh, we, will, we will walk. We will, uh, we will walk. Not will they not obey the order? Police or not? Usually, oh, you well, the, the, people, you know, be you know, we will, obedient. Yeah, yes, we, are, we, will, we, will, we will not go uh, toward any confrontation. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we will call upon the police not to carry out any unlawful orders or uh, any unrightful orders. Even in Stalin's time, Stalin always referred to the law uh, in when he cracked down on the people and he purged millions of people. Uh, so. The law has to be a rightful law uh, in Armenian Iravagan, Boshman Orinagan, Iravagan. So there has to be a right to the law. Uh, and so I believe that policemen uh, will not stand against the people. Uh, and uh, we will decide together where we will go. Uh, our request for a march around the city that would take us by the presidential headquarters, which belongs to the people as of April 9th, has been refused. Uh, uh, that to me is an unacceptable and an unrightful response. So we will consult with our constituents and our uh, fellow travelers and the majority of the Armenian people who will be with us on the square. And we will go and whatever, wherever we go, it will be peaceful, it will be constitutional, and if, there, if there's any tension whatsoever, it will be on the part of the de facto authorities who after April 9th will not have a legal foundation to talk with the Armenian people. One question, just for for myself, it's very interesting. How would you take an oath? You know, what would you say? Is there a text already? Well, no, there's not. A, I mean, we're, we're um, 
there's not a there's a, there is not a, uh, a text uh, yet. I imagine that we will be we will be passing out uh, first the, cons the constitution of the Republic of Armenia, uh, and uh, without any secrets or surprises, I think that I will say a few words from the constitution, especially the second article, which says the power belongs to the people. Uh -huh. uh, and beyond that, I think that. Um, I'm not going to get into a word game with Mr. Sarkisian. He will be an illegitimate de facto president, and I'm not going to get into a uh, uh, a contest with him. Uh, his so, con his uh, contest his contest is with the Armenian people. And what is he going to do if he takes the oath and the Catholicos blesses it? If he takes the false oath in contravention of Christianity, in contravention of Nezhde and the and the great uh, military leader whom the Republican Party reveres, and so on. Uh, what are you, you going to do with a people that doesn't recognize you? How are we going to pursue our democratic rights, our civil rights, our human rights, our uh, 100th anniversary of the genocide, recognition of Mount Miskata, but when you, we don't have a people that support? So uh, we have offered, and that was your part of your first question, we have offered, even though the, the, the uh, election was stolen from me, I went with my feet and said, okay, Mr. Sarkisian, uh, let's figure out a way to present a program for national salvation. Let's, let's meet halfway, meet the people halfway. If you don't want a new election, if you're afraid of a new election, if you're afraid of debating me, debate me. But if you're afraid of that, then come halfway to the people and let's have a sharing of power, a power and sharing arrangement with the people that will allow for parliamentary elections this year with a, uh, based on a proportional European system, uh, and in advance of that, a sharing of uh, the executive uh, and judicial authority uh, with the uh, uh, with the people of Armenia in advance of legislative elections. If he doesn't want all that, you know, it's up to him. I'm not going to force him to do that. But uh, uh, he's got to figure out where he wants to be in one year or five years. And uh, I'm offering him, on behalf of the people who've supported me, and uh, I obviously believe that it's a lot more than 540,000. I think there are millions of people who now figure out and figured out that this. This baby, this revolution of Barev, of hello, uh, belongs to a, a, a lot more people than 540,000. And don't you dare count the people like a flock of sheep, as he's done once or twice, saying, oh, you're only 3,000 or 30,000. Don't you dare do that, because the Armenians around the world have come together, and there are millions of Armenians who demand change. And he has an opportunity now, and I'm not making an ultimatum. Uh, two days left. Uh, you want to make the change, yeah. Mr. Sarkisian? Come before us, make waiting. the change. I'm not waiting. I'm not, I will not wait for Godot, Godot in Chips but uh, he, will, he has an opportunity uh, to come forward and make the step right, right now. Because afterwards, I don't rule anything out afterwards, but once you take the false oath, I don't think people will, the people will not forgive anybody who takes or blesses a false oath. Arnold, Arnold, you have, you uh, have something going on there. Okay, uh, we have both a question from a viewer as well as a question from myself. Is, uh, you keep saying, we will do this and we will do that, we will walk, we will take the oath. But uh, some people may not have the context and maybe it's, uh, it's good to let them know who do you mean by saying we, because... Um, just figures don't tell much. Uh, I mean, we know half a million people voted for you. Do you mean that half a million people will be with you? We know that politicians like Nikol Pashinyan are with you, and we know what happened well, well, while Nikol was on charge on March 1 in 2008, and I've covered these events extensively. So uh, sort of to give a context, what do you mean, how many people, where are you going to do, and what are the possible consequences? Well, thanks for that question. Uh, you know. Um, it is not a la mode in Armenia to uh, to answer a question with I don't know because in Armenia everybody knows the answer to everything uh, in this case however I must say that uh, I don't know the answer to that uh, and I can merely say that we are the uh, the heirs to uh, several generations of, uh, of election struggles where the people and especially the opposition has won uh, has won, but again, there's the uh, the electoral system in Armenia has been forged and falsified in a post-Stalinist, post-Soviet vertical that continues to um, be the basis of the regime today. And that re regime will change. It will change. I'm not saying what we've done is original. We take 
Uh, we take the legacy from those who have come before, all, all the other presidents who have been previously elected, whether they're Manu Gyan or Demir Jan or Demir Jan or David Rostian. Uh, it's not about me or them, but in this case, uh, we have a situation where, uh, unlike some of our predecessors who had very good skills in terms of gathering people on the square, we're not necessarily a, a people, uh, sort of a movement where you can count us on the square. We're everywhere. We're in the we're on the streets. We're in the theaters. We're in the universities, in the cafes, in the in in the villages across the country. Uh, uh, and and thankfully, uh, Radio uh, Liberty for Europe has been with me, walking with me uh, across the country. And maybe you have your own professional objective opinion, but I think you might be able also to attest to the fact that uh, there's been a shift in the consciousness of the people. And the people have said, you know what, I'm not, don't count me. I'm not a flock of sheep. I'm not 30,000. I'm not even 540,000. I'm an individual, and I belong to a collective that's called the Republic of Armenia. We're citizens. And the citizens are going to take control. Whether Rafi is here or not, tomorrow or the next day, the citizens are taking control of our country. And that is a great, the greatest possible asset of this quest for liberty. Uh, and that's the that's the thing that gives me the greatest sense of pride, uh, and uh, and that's why as I look forward to a couple of days from now, uh, you cannot count us on on your finger. You can't count us on a computer. We're going to be all over the place. Some people will be watching uh, live uh, on Radio Liberty and Ahmed Plus and Gala and Civil Net and all the good people who've been following us. Uh, some people will be on. The, a lot of people will be on the square. I'm, I'm sure the the square will be full. But if Mr. Sarkisian has been threatening me that, okay, gather more than 3,000 people and we'll talk, you're going to have your people, Mr. Sarkisian. So what are you going to do about it? Uh, and, uh, uh, and our response is that we have both quality and quantity and much more than the Heritage Party or, uh, uh, or overcoming this monopoly on power the Republican Party has forced upon the people of Armenia is that the average citizen is, is coming forward and saying, you know what, uh, this is my country, and the youth especially, the youth are taking uh, an advanced role. And so I think you can uh, look forward to a very proactive uh, celebration, a commemoration, a ceremony uh, uh, that, uh, that will uh, promulgate the new Armenia, and then we'll be walking the streets. And uh, I imagine, and I call upon the police, do not stand against the people of Armenia. Open the roads. Let us walk together uh, as we've cooperated with you in the past, and I'm sure that we'll be able to present our, uh, uh, our, our position. Uh, I'm a person who believes in Armenia, who, lo who loves my homeland. I'm someone who believes in constitutional change, and I will repeat that Mr. Sarkisian, if he takes that oath, will be outside of the Constitution, and he will not survive. He will not su survive this upcoming term of his unless he meets the people halfway. Now, there are several people wish you success, including Alexander Solomonian. This is Facebook. Scarlett Bilanchian, also uh, Facebook. Narina Kopian, Manuel Lovanichian, uh, Imia Fam, and this Google Plus. Manuel Lovanichian. <laughs> Astrik Arman Makarchian. So they're just. Uh, Wishing you well. I wish us all well. That's right. <laughs> yes. And now I have another question here. Deep Armenia portal. Dear Mr. President Rafi Hovanisyan says, have you or your support tried to organize movement in regional cells, groups for using inactions like strikes? This question also asked by Gagi Kalamikhanya. Regional cells, okay. Yeah, like regional well, as, as, movements, yeah. well, as you know, we've uh, we've paid a lot of attention, and I've uh, made a very a purposeful um, commitment uh, to seek out every Armenian citizen, out, even in the capital of uh, of Armenia, Yerevan, and beyond. And we've been to the regions and the cities and villages of Armenia several times, uh, and that is a reflection of my respect and love for the people of Armenia, because uh, the people. Uh, they believed, and from Gyumri and Vanazor and Ijevan in the north and Noyamberian, all the way to Yerkmanzor and Kapan in the south, where people believed that uh, there was a fiefdom and uh, and the governor of Sunik and the governor of Gerar Kunik and people who think that they're above the law would be able to to uh, 
sort of choke off uh, the, the people's right to their, uh, to their vote and suffrage, uh, people came through and they believed in themselves, and that's why uh, I paid special attention both before my three weeks on, on Liberty Square not eating, and then uh, whether it was a, a hunger strike or a strike against falsehood, and, uh, and then in the last week it was, it was whole, Holy Week. Uh, but both before and after that, we've gone to the regions. We've reached out to people because the real Armenia is everywhere, and, uh, and we have a wonderful people. Uh, the, the sanctity of our homeland is not only Mount Ararat and Mount Aragads and the soil that we love and the flag, but it's, that, it's the average Armenian person, the intellectual, the worker, the villager, uh, the teacher, the doctor, the soldier, and we've reached out to everybody. But we've got to do a better job at organizing. Uh, Heritage has been uh, a wonderful organization where we've stood next to the citizen of Armenia, the average citizen, and I'm very proud of our Heritage uh, members of parliament and, and volunteers. Uh, but we've got to do a better job at organizing, and I'm sure that now that we're in this struggle that, uh, that is a pan-national struggle, that is beyond the purview of heritage or any other given party, and that's why in the Yerevan election, we're not doing a party list. We're going, Barev Yerevan, we're saying, hello Yerevan, we're going to win in Yerevan. But we're, we're doing that to say that, okay, political parties are good, you need that for politics, but more important than any political party and their gain and their struggle and their dirty sort of maneuvers against each other to say, it's me, I'm, I'm the winner, I'm the strong one, I'm the rich one, is the average citizen. And uh, so we're going to reach out to the average citizen, uh, and we've done that already, but we've got to do a better job at organizing regionally, and I think the question is a very good one, and we'll take that very seriously. Yeah, how do you, do you come up with this concept, the simple concept, by it? <laughs> Yeah, is it your invention, or you got some from yeah. some well, uh, Mr. Tamaraz, I, advisors, <laughs> uh, smart people? That's, it's not an invention, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a part of my nature. And now also, did you have this as a secondary mission when you were running for the president? Or, or it no, just it then, it was, it was just very natural. You realized that you have to go. I, well, I, I, no, I, I decided it, it was very, it was very natural. It was a natural body, a natural hello. Uh, and in fact, the, even the term, the bad evolution or bad evolution, uh, came very, um, not accidentally, but sort of uh, just uh, in, in sort of in conversation. We were talking with Gadi, my son, and his friend Alec, and, and, and uh, other friends of ours, and, and one thing led to another, and Levin said, put in his two words. And the whole body of hello became a bad evolution. We didn't start that way, that's natural. Uh, and even when I got involved in politics uh, 10 years ago or so, uh, you know, people are saying, well, this, you know, he has this multi-million dollar Western po uh, <laughs> uh this team coming in to teach him how to say hello. Uh, it's all very natural. It's free. Uh, we ran this campaign on, I don't know if it's uh, a record in world history, uh, but we respected the campaign finance laws. And we spent whatever a couple hundred thousand dollars maximum that that, that res respected the laws. Well, everyone spent millions and billions and billions. So uh, we did everything according to the book. Um, and uh, if we had more support, maybe it would have been a stronger result. We we're sure we won anyway. But I think it was better this way. We showed that we are humble, we are modest, uh, we were out there saying uh, saying hello. And there was, uh, there was no special plan. People made fun of us sometimes. And even to this day, they made fun. And Gaudin talked about that in his wonderful speech a couple of days ago on Liberty Square. But uh, I think overall, the people said, you know what, this is, this is all, uh, we're all humans. This is a human thing. Uh, and if you want your authorities, if you want your leadership to be accountable to you, not only to say barev, to say, I'm going to be there. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to abandon you. I'm going to be in Gumri and Vanadzor all the way to this and to Sunik and all the Marses. And whatever I pledged as part of my campaign platform, I'm going to be there to be responsible to you and to be accountable. And I think the people uh, people responded uh, to that, and they surprised everybody. They surprised everybody, and they surprised even these de facto authorities who thought they were going to uh, have a landslide victory uh, and. And, and even with their Central Election Commission and the fraud and the falsification, uh, they couldn't take away the, the victory of the spirit which the Armenian people brought on February 18th. Now there's a, another question uh, from Rafi Art. I don't know who is this, but dear Rafi, uh, there is no doubt that 
uh, the current regime in Armenia should go. But there are a few unanswered questions which I believe the opposition so far has failed to answer. Firstly, you do realize that the new government is more than new president. You and your party have been always accused of lacking clear strategies, he says, and even members to implement your policies in case you come to power. How do you plan to fill those gaps? What makes you think that you will not be surrounded by the same corrupt people? Secondly, how far do you plan to go in your struggle, considering that the corrupt regime in Armenia will not hand over the power without bloodshed, and Armenia is sandwiched between two genocidal criminal states, he says, uh, which spare no opportunity to harm our nation, don't you think it might be better if you accept Sarkisian's offer for dialogue and reach a power-sharing agreement which will provide you with some leverages for the future elections? Well, that's a very, uh, that's a very political question, very uh, properly put, I think. I think. Uh, who is it? R Rafi R? Rafi R. Okay. It's, uh, it's a nickname. All right. Well, that's, uh, yeah. that's very good. Um, First of all, clear strategies. Uh, our strategies are very clear, and maybe there's no other strategy that's clearer than ours in terms of domestic and foreign policy. First of all, I've never ever had a business in Armenia, uh, and no one in my family has ever had a business. And in the years of our de jure authority or service to the people of Armenia, I rule out that anybody in my family or administration will allow an abusive office and a conflict of interest between public service and private gain. Conflict of interest is the greatest uh, form of corruption in Armenia, and it's everywhere, from the presidency, to the government, to the parliament, to the judiciary, and I will rule it, rule it out by my personal example. That's very clear, number one. It's very clear that by bringing the shadow economy into the budget, because I have no dependency on any oligarch or any business or anybody, any capital, foreign capital, that we will bring uh, uh, money into the budget and be able there, therefore, to raise uh, the expenses or the or the uh, allotments to education, to security, to culture, uh, and to pensions within one year, and to create jobs, 180,000 minimum in, in terms of uh, in, in the first uh, in the next five years. Uh, so that's number one. Foreign policy. There's nobody who's clearer than we are. Uh, and we are, are, we are, Yere, we are Yerevan-centric, based on our national interest. We can debate us, we'll debate you, uh, but we respect everybody who respects us. Uh, and we believe in the sovereignty of Armenia, with a strategic uh, partnership with Russia and the United States and with Europe, as long as they respect our interests as well. And that means a sovereign Armenia, an independent Armenia. That means uh, the historical justice in terms of a recognition of the, of the genocide and a normalization of, uh, of relations with Turkey, uh, either without preconditions, as has been the uh, measured policy of the previous administrations, or if Turkey is going to continue with its policies of protocols and uh, preconditions, then Armenia will, on April 24, 2015, we will present our own preconditions. So Turkey will have to decide. No preconditions, that's, I think, a more proper approach. But if they're going to present their preconditions, uh, then Armenia will have to present its, and protocols are not the way to go. On Mount Karabakh, Mount Karabakh is no less worthy of recognition than Kosovo and South Sudan and East Timor and all the other new states. So let's get with it. Uh, Europe and Russia and the United States, you guys are talking about rule of law, you're members of the Minsk Group, uh, you recognize one kind of country but not the other, that's unacceptable. Uh, we, reje we reject also the Madrid Principles. The Madrid principles have to, re have to be renegotiated, and the, uh, the duly elected government of Mount Karabakh has to be re uh, at the negotiating table. Now, is that clear or is that not clear? That's pretty clear. So on domestic and foreign policy, we're very clear. We, can we cannot agree with each other, uh, but I think that uh, we're very clear. Uh, and then finally, uh, based on this, I don't think there are too many uh, gaps. Uh, yes, there are genocidal, genocidal states around us, but those genocidal states will face the history, will face the music. Uh, my grandmother was saved by a Turkish family, uh, and we also have to have the self-confidence to, uh, to pay tribute to those people who went against the odds and saved our grandparents' lives, uh, and to raise a monument to them as well. Uh, we have to, be, uh, we have to uh, respect human rights uh, everywhere. 
but we will uh, we will you know we will have a full normalization. We will have a right of return. We will have a a, um, a solution to the Armenian question and recognition of the genocide and the great national dispossession. But that should not be an excuse for us not to build a democratic state. That's a false excuse, and we've got to get over that um, narrow past agenda and understand that we have to take responsibility for the affairs of our own citizens. Yes, there is a great tragedy and a national disposition and a genocide, and we will seek justice for that. Yes, the people in Mount Karabakh they fought a war of liberation, they won, they beat the aggressive uh, war that Azerbaijan unleashed, unleashed against them, they deserve recognition. But please, do not scare the citizens of Armenia with threats of war or genocide neighbors, because right now, the worst possible genocide that could happen to uh, the people of Armenia is the genocide of fear, of falsification, of stolen elections. And I think the Armenian people on February 18 said, you know what, no way. We're knocking on the war, world's door and saying justice abroad, but we're living, demanding justice at home at the same time. Now we have a question. And, and on offer of dialogue, please. Yeah. I'm the one who offered dialogue. Yeah. I'm the one who offered a, a specific program, and in the next two days, if Mr. Sarkisian has something to say, I'll be happy to hear him out. Now, there's a question from Shushan Ghazarian. Uh, she says, Dear Mr. Hovannisian, what can the diaspora do to change Armenia's political climate? And she has another question that from 2008, Armenian citizens living abroad are stripped from their rights to take part in the elections from their current places of residence. What would your, stand, uh, your stance be on this if you were elected? Well, you're, you're, well first of all, um, I've, I've resisted uh, in this last couple of months to say that I've been elected president. Yeah. Okay, you know that. I've, yeah. I've resisted that. And I don't need any presidency other than the fact that the citizen is, uh, is the source of, uh, of power and authority. Sir Sakisan is not the president, and April 9th, he will not be the president. That's why I offered him in a couple of days after the election to let's go to the second round. If there's any doubt, first open up those 1,900 uh, precincts. You have the right as the acting president, the de facto president, until April 9th, go into the Constitutional Court, open up those 1,900 uh, ballot boxes so that like, there will be no doubt among the Armenian people. And he didn't do it. He didn't do it because he knew that even with all the falsification and the forgeries and the fact that even people, hundreds and thousands of ballots were stopped, uh, he would not uh, be the, the, the winner there. So uh, first of all, I think that um, the diaspora has to get real, has to get contemporary. Yes, the diaspora is the product of the genocide. My grandparents were survivors of the genocide. I was born in the diaspora because of the genocide. I'm the carrier of the great pain of genocide. Uh, and we must continue as citizens of, uh, I'm a citizen of Armenia, thank uh, God right now, uh, after a long struggle for it. But everybody in their own country has a right to pursue justice, and you should pursue that. Uh, but that is not the only thing on the Armenian agenda. The Armenian agenda has to become contemporary, has to be modern. and uh, part of the agenda has to be not only recognition of genocide and recognition of Mount Karabakh, uh, which is uh, which is a part of historical justice, and that will happen. But we have to understand we have our own state right now. We have a state. Uh, we have a flag. We have an education system. We have a generation that is struggling now in Armenia to find its own relevance, to have a future, to have a career, to keep the families here, to turn the tide on immigration. And that's why the diaspora has to decide. I can't preach to the diaspora, Shoshani. You tell me what the diaspora should do. I think the diaspora should take a far more proactive role in being part of, uh, of the Armenian rebirth, to be part of the Armenian democratic movement, not to just stand back and to watch it on YouTube and say, well, this is a nice soap opera. Well, look what Lerat Rafi is doing, or what Mr. Tamrazan is asking. Get with Armenia. Get involved. It's economic investment. It's education. It's uh, culture, uh, and it's accountability. Hold the Armenian office holders, even the de facto office holders, accountable for their words. Not only Turks and Azerbaijanis who have committed crimes against humanity and against the Armenian people, but the Armenians. We have leaders in Armenia who have committed crimes against the Armenian people. So uh, let's let's get beyond this false patriotism. False, the true true national unity can take place based on the law, 
based on the Constitution. And so I think the political climate can be served by a diaspora that takes a proactive role in the affairs of state, that is not af afraid of critical engagement, of engaging uh, the Armenian authorities, and most importantly, the Armenian people in supporting uh, our uh, quest for a, a better country, a democratic country, a more accountable country. Uh, and, uh, and finally, uh, I would say yes, I agree with you. I believe that the restriction on uh, Armenian citizens who live outside of Armenia and who do not have the right to vote, uh, I believe that's unconstitutional. I believe the Constitutional Court, which unfortunately is not an independent judicial, judicial institution, unfortunately, but we will see that day, uh, has to uh, rule on the constitutional, uh, constitutionality of that legislation, of that, of that government directive. What does it mean that you can be in Los Angeles or in Washington or in Moscow and Brussels and Paris? If you're a diplomat, you can, you can vote online, but if you're not a diplomat or if you're not a certain kind of businessman, you're an average person, you're studying there, you have a, you're, you're working there, you can't go into the sovereign premises of the embassy and consul and vote. That's unconstitutional. And we all know that the 800,000 Armenians who live outside and who are citizens of Armenia are abused. Their absence is used by these de facto authorities because their absence is used for multiple voting. And uh, uh, I believe that has to be changed in the future. You have the right to vote. Now, Mr. Wallenstein, we have a lot of questions now. They're just coming uh, as we speak now. Okay. And uh, Arthur, will you just... Uh, uh, Read, yes, read um, I, I don't even have time to pick yeah. or filter, so I'm just yeah. going to go one from each uh, network. I should answer uh, more uh, compactly, right? Sure, uh, if read, possible, because okay. we got like yeah. 10, 13 Because everybody wants an answer from you. All right, all right. I'll so <laughs> I'll just go, maybe I'll skip it if it's too long. Uh, it's, this is a question on Facebook from Tamar Kasparian, and she's saying, Dear Rafi, Oh, Lenin said, without revolutionary theory, there can be no revolutionary movement. The role of vanguard fighter can be fulfilled only by a party that is guided by the most advanced theory. Uh, so, goes on. he goes on to quote Engel, uh, Engels that the theoretical struggle is just as important as political and economic struggle. Theory does not arise spontaneously from class struggle, but requires the work of intellectuals, added Lenin. Sorry for doing so fast. So the questions are, what the theory of part evolution and who are the intellectuals behind it? <laughs> the theory is power to the average citizen, empowerment of the average citizen, uh, overcoming the theory and the practice of fear, of injustice, of unequal protection, of abuse of citizens' rights for private gain, uh, and uh, ultimately, the intellectuals are the people who are on the square, and I hope you'll join us to talk. Uh, so, another question from Google Plus, if I may. Again, a long one, but from Ruben Aydinian. And it goes, Dear Rafi, it has become obvious to me that the current political system in Armenia sucks the best at the time into corruption, independent of their, their devotion to the country. My conclusion is that it happens not because they are bad people, but because there is no oversight or, if you want to call it, efficient division of power, which is able to control effectively against those who will try to usurp the power. So my question to you is, how do you intend to create such a division of powers that will be fair and protective of people's rights and not the rights of the few? I mean, not all the time of your presidency, but not at the time of your presidency, but along uh, long after you are gone. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, that is a, a civic commitment of mine uh, that I will see the day uh, where we do have uh, a, a checks and balances, uh, separation of powers, and, uh, and finally a de jure presidency, which we, don't have, we haven't had for 20 years. Uh, and ultimately, uh, the bottom line here is I can't do it alone, and you should not expect me to do it alone. And my greatest moment of pride will be uh, in the next election cycle where I do not seek re-election, but I stand by a young new voice, perhaps a woman, uh, to say that the uh, future of Armenia uh, is in the youth and nobody should stand, as all the most incumbents, past presidents, including this one, have, uh, has said, that if I'm not elected, then Armenia will not have stability. 
stability or security and so on. That is a false argument. Uh, and they say, you know, l'état c'est moi. The state is not you. The state is not me. The state is the citizen. Uh, and I think that uh, um, my commitment, both my strength and sometimes my, uh, my disadvantage, my weakness is such as well, that uh, my ambition is not to sit on a chair and to, to rule, but to see the day where uh, the people of Armenia have their choice and the people of Armenia uh, bring to power a, uh, their presidency, their legislature, uh, they hold them accountable, and then five years later, if they don't, they're not happy, they change them. I want to see that change. We have not had that change in 20 years. Uh, our neighbors have. Georgia has, as an example, and chapeau to Georgia. Uh, when I was former minister, we had the advantage. We were regarded as a democratic oasis in the region, but we lost it because we forged ourselves. So let's get away from these Armenian genatsas, this macho toasts, and, uh, and respect the Constitution and the rights of our citizens. Now, there's a very specific question from Golden Tent, and uh, he or she says that, to my knowledge, you have not supported the release of political prisoner Tigran Arakelian. Would you do so, or why not? Or why not? Yes. Well, uh, to Golden Tent, uh, to your knowledge, uh, sometimes we are wrong when we say to my knowledge, so your knowledge is wrong. I support the release of the sure. support, yeah. Yes, and there's another question, Gavrilenko Yuri, and uh, is asking, this is this question is in Armenian, Argeri Baron of Anisyan. Yes, I'll Do you want me to translate Yeah, that? yeah, please. Uh, dear Mr. Hovanisyan, um, as News AM website has reported, on April 4th, um, Varta Petyan, our Varta Petyan, uh, had to leave Armenia via the ter territory of Turkey. Don't you think that is uh, important uh, before the uh, before uh, Varta Petyan leaves to send uh, 10, 15,000 people to Zvartnots airport who will uh, bring him back from here as Zvartnots to Yerevan? Yeah, uh, Mr. Varpetyan has been uh, has been in exile for many years. There have been also other writers who not been allowed to return. Uh, I believe that all Armenians, uh, Armenian citizens and Armenians should have the right to, uh, to return to their homeland. And uh, I don't think there's a, a reason to send 15,000 people. Uh, but you should know that as soon as we, re we received the alarm about this, that he had come here for his birthday, uh, the Heritage uh, uh, Group in Parliament, Fraxia in Parliament, Ruben Hagopian and Zari Postanjan went to the airport. Uh, Zari Postanjan has also sent a um, a demand to uh, to the government. So we are pursuing this issue, uh, and it uh, relates not only to Mr. Varbedia, but to many, many other people. Uh, people have, must have the right to return to a free, independent, and sovereign Armenia. Now, there's Eric Staryan. He uh, says that uh, you have an Armenia. It's the question Don't you think that for, for to achieve the serious results, uh, the, the, your base should be? Uh, the army, the and, army the and the police. Uh, do, do you the think they, they will they stand, stand by, stand by yeah. mm -hmm. That's up to them. Uh, I, uh, I believe as of April 9th, uh, we have a new situation. Uh, I think that uh, those people who will be at the sports complex uh, that, bear, that bears the, names of, the name of Mr. Demirjan and take the oath, uh, uh, will not be a de jure authority. Uh, I do not believe that uh, their command to the uh, law enforcement agencies will be a rightful command. As I said, Stalin always uh, did his purges based on reference to the law, but the law must be rightful. And that's why uh, we've worked in terms of political culture over the last several months and years, and that's just my nature, uh, to have a mutual respect between law enforcement and citizens. I think we're on that road. Uh, and I, uh, I expect there not to be any confrontation or that no road will be blocked on behalf of the people. Uh, I will obviously call on the de facto authorities and the defense minister and the head of the police uh, to uh, be restrained, uh, not to involve the police, uh, the, first of all, the soldiers unconstitutionally in the internal affairs of state, just as, unfortunately, some of the commanders, with some, with some happy exceptions, took their the soldiers, who are the source of great national pride for us, uh, they took them into temptation and into a violation of law, open voting, multiple voting, and so on. So we hope uh, the, that the army will stand proudly on the frontier 
uh, ensure our national security. Uh, the police will be there to uh, to uh, to to secure the safety of uh, of the Armenian citizens. But if anybody uh, gets involved in the in blocking the civic movement for a democratic uh, Armenia, uh, I believe that uh, they will be outside of the confines of the law. So we look forward, of course, to um, both the soldiers, uh, the armed forces, the law enforcement agencies, as there are many, many volunteer corps who have fought valiantly in the Karabakh War in defense of the Armenian frontiers, uh, to everybody to be in their constitutional role. We, look, we expect that. And nothing less. No, uh, really yeah, I have a very specific question from Simon Marakian, uh, who is at Bias, who is living in the U.S. And um, Mr. Marakian says, "Dear Rafi, thank you for the work you have done to raise awareness about the destruction of the Julfa Cemetery in Juba. How would you have reacted to the destruction if you were present in December 2005?" But then, let me uh, further on. Uh, there is another question from him: is what can be uh, can the diaspora do to change Armenia's political climate? Um, Talked about it. Yeah, and then another question about voting rights for the um, people in the diaspora. So maybe back to the first. Yeah, question. well, we we discussed that. Obviously, the diaspora has to be a lot more proactive. Has to respect the classical agenda of genocide recognition, of liberty for mountainous Karabakh, and territorial integrity for Artsakh, uh, but also to be critically engaged in the democratic development of Armenia. That's uh, number one. Yes, voting rights for all citizens, wherever they are. We respect our own sovereignty. Every consulate, every embassy is a part of the Republic of Armenia. And people should have the right to vote, not just diplomats. We, don't, we shouldn't have second and third classes of, of citizens, and that's what we have uh, today. And, with, and the first question was what? Uh, and first question was Julfa Cemetery. Well, Julfa, what, I, I, I remember, I, I, well, I, I did react. I, I remember that I was in the middle of December. In 2005, I was at Madanataran. We were uh, in a big, uh, in a civic movement uh, for uh, for civil rights, for a, a valid constitution, and we got the, got the word of what was happening uh, a decade after the ceasefire, uh, hundreds of miles away from uh, the conflict zone, where in broad daylight the Azerbaijani authorities um, uh, turned to rubble the medieval uh, cemetery of Juha. Had that been a Taliban uh, uh, violated cemetery, had that been a Jewish cemetery, the world would have been rightfully, would have been rightfully enraged. But it was an Armenian cemetery and the world was silent. And part of my protest in Europe, at the Council of Europe, was also related to, to, to Juha. Uh, there should not be double and triple standards. Uh, all cultural heritage of all nationalities, of all religions, of all civilizations must be respected. And I, for one, as uh, responsible at that time, would have ten taken a proactive diplomatic and political initiative uh, to bring uh, the perpetrators of that shameless, shameless act of uh, crime against humanity to justice. And uh, Mr. Aliyev would have, uh, would have been brought to task for that, uh, uh, for that cowardly act against the Armenian cross stones, Khajkars of Juha. Shame on Aliyev. Now there's another guy from, uh, I think he's uh, Armenian American, and he says that as I have found see living in America, I'm planning to return to Armenia in upcoming years, and if this movement succeeds, there will be no reason for me to stay here. So this is just. Uh, a statement. And come on home. Come on home. <laughs> and we're going to change our country. No yeah. more. No more brain drain. We're going to bring our. We're going to bring our best back. It's the time of return. Uh, yeah. A question from Lara Aharonian um, and a question to Rafi. What would he would be his strategy and his vision of new Armenia regarding the involvement of women in politics on a higher level? And how come there is not a higher representation of women candidates in the upcoming municipal elections from his party? Oh well, I, well I'm not sure if that's the, that's the case. Uh, I think that uh, you would agree that heritage has always uh, put a focus on first of all the best and brightest, whether they're men or women. Um, I'm against false quotas, although uh, you will see that uh, our best and brightest are women as well, and women in Parliament, uh, on the front lines in terms of civil rights, on March 1st, national issues, genocide, we're there, and they're women. Uh, and uh, I hope, as I said, that uh, in the next five years I'll stand next to the first uh, 
presidential candidate who will be a woman and who will become the president of Armenia. And I think that uh, that's something for all of us to work toward. Uh, and I, uh, I'm very proud of what uh, uh, what she has done and what uh, women's groups are doing. We have uh, issues of uh, false machoism, domestic violence, uh, getting uh, women integrated into the political life of the country. Uh, and I think that should be done, not necessarily by quotas. Quotas are fine in, this, in a transitional society. But there's no need for it because the best and brightest are also women. Uh, and so uh, you can count on me uh, to uh, to move forward in that direction. Uh, but as we have sort of a special sort of transitional kind of uh, society, uh, we have to also engage uh, the female voters of Armenia uh, and uh, uh, question this query. Today is their day. It is their day. And congratulations yes. to all the, all the women, <laughs> and women and sisters yes. and daughters of, uh, of Armenia. But the women also have to get ready to vote for female candidates. I think one of the impediments to having more women involved in politics is perhaps not only the false machoism of Armenian society, but women not being ready to vote for other women. I think the women have to think about that as well. There is one question from, I, I guess, women, uh, woman, uh, Katie, Katie Pierce. Dear Rafi, why did you not wear more sunscreen when you were outside? <laughs> This is not a good lesson for the You're children. Right. I, I have so many uh, faults See, and, and uh, faults <laughs> and faux you. pas mistakes. Uh, that's just one of them. Thank you for bringing that, that to my attention. I'll try to correct that as as, as well as all the other mistakes just, I've made. Just a little quick warning that we kind of ran, ran out of time, okay. but uh, maybe we can extend to accommodate a couple of more questions okay. if you don't, don't mind. Right. And um, uh, in particular, I would like to ask the question from Keran Vartanian and. Um, the question is a tough one. Dear Rafi, please agree that the euro it's, uh, it's possible to control whole Yerevan's elections, uh, elections processes and win. Heritage, ARF, Hak, Bahaka together have majority in election commissions besides CEC. In case of failure, Bahaka victory, only NA opposition parties will carry all responsibility. So will I have right to accuse for failure after May, May 5? Uh, get on. You can accuse me if that will help you. Uh, help you with anything. You can accuse me of anything. I, I bear responsibility for the uh, political situation in Armenia. I, I bear my share, uh, and I uh, I approach uh, my task and my responsi responsibility very seriously with with gravity. I think the ultimate issue, first of all, is is the uh, the flawed and the falsified presidential campaign and the need. Uh, right now to find a national solution to the great Armenian revival. We're, we're a nation in renaissance. Uh, it's not palpable, it's not uh, tangible to a lot of people, but I think if we're honest with ourselves, we're in, we're in, a, uh, we're in a renaissance situation that has very little to do with uh, Rafi and has a lot to do with uh, the average Armenian citizen who's taken her or his uh, country and constitution into his or her hands. Uh, as for May 5th, uh, I think the, the Yerevan elections are a corollary, are an offshoot of the, of the national mission that we're on. Uh, I'm in favor of, of uh, participation, even though the Armenian electoral system is bad, even though authority has never been changed through elections. Just imagine if I had stayed at home two or three months ago, as many other political parties did not take part, what would have happened? I believed. I believed in the people, and the people believed back. And so, as unfair as it is, and uneven the political uh, field in Armenia, we've got to take part. Uh, and hopefully, if uh, contrary to our wish, we were not able to have a broader coalition. We are the only heritage is the only one that has put down its national its party flag, and we're going forward with Badev Yerevan. It's not a party list. Several political parties, citizens, intellectuals, artists, we're all together to say Badev Yerevan. Uh, we wish there would have been other political parties to join us, but uh, it's politics, and so we look forward to winning uh, the Yerevan election and then to cooperating with the other opposition parties uh, to make sure that for the betterment of Armenia and finally for uh, a healthier Republican Party, for the first time in a long time, they become the minority, the opposition. The Republic of Armenia needs the, Repub uh, needs the Republican our Party to be in opposition and to be a minority, because they have uh, they have taken uh, their authority illegally, unlawfully, to the extreme, and they've confused their own identity with the public, with the state of Armenia, and 
That is unacceptable. Uh, the Republican Party must go into opposition, and I'm sure that Vadiv Yerevan, together with his partners in opposition, will uh, bring back the power of the people to the city of Yerevan and thereafter to the, all the cities of the Republic of Armenia. Well, there's a question about foreign uh, relations. And uh, it, Emil said, I can ask Mr. Ovanesian, could you please identify foreign relationships challenges for Armenia and give us some perspective about how your political activity impacts or contribute to helping to stop or confront to the political and economic expansion of Russia on Armenia? That's his question. Yeah. Well, Please be specific, he says. Well, first of all, uh, we have to respect our own sovereignty. And we, are, we, are, we have failed over the last 20 years to respect our own sovereignty. So number one, Armenia has to respect its own sovereignty, our own national interests. Uh, and we, can, we cannot do that without having a de jure government and presidency which respects uh, and represents the will of the people. We have not had that. So you cannot pursue national interests. We cannot uh, defend our sovereignty unless we have uh, the rule of law, unless we have uh, the vote of confidence of the people of Armenia, which this, uh, which, which this administration sadly uh, does not have again. But I will say that Armenia's future is based on uh, not belonging to the CSTO, Collective Security Treaty Organization, or to NATO, to achieve NATO standards in terms of our uh, oper interoperability, civilian control in our, uh, in, uh, over the uh, armed forces, to have good cooperation with the CSTO members. But Armenia, in my view, should uh, aspire for the day that it does not belong to any collective organization, but seeks its security through a network of bilateral relationships based on mutual respect and mutual interests, beginning, beginning with Russia, United States, Europe, China, um, but not being in this camp or that camp. To have a Armenia-based, a Yerevan-centric foreign policy that uh, seeks a network, a web of bilateral relationship, beginning with Russia uh, and continuing with the United States and Europe, uh, and ultimately uh, a horizontal uh, approach to our, our security, with Armenia no longer being a vassal to any country foreign, and especially not a vassal to its own authorities and its oligarchs within the country. Now, since today is a, a Women's Day, I'm, I'm going to uh, give another question to Ripsi Merbalian. She's saying, Dear Rafi, thank you for being who you are, she says, and for all that you have done for Armenia. I'm inspired by your kindness and love to the entire humanity. What is your secret? Where do you get all that kindness and love from? Sincere, sincerely, Ripsi Man. Well, now, strong out and uh, happy Mother's Day, happy Woman's Day. Uh, I, we, I say it once in a while, you know, all of us, we're all human, we don't, sometimes all, our, all of our thoughts are not original. We, we repeat things sometimes, let's be honest about it. But one thing that I repeat, because it's true, is that the one, uh, Government. First of all, did she describe you really? Was it was it correct way to put you? Oh, oh I don't know. I think she <laughs> she exaggerated a little bit. Um, yeah. Are you really but, that kind of person I'm, in your family? Well, I'm, I'm, your I'm, I'm someone who respects uh, the women in my family, my grandmothers, who, who brought me up as an Armenian, who loves his country in, in in the United States. They were survivors of the genocide, and Hungary and Sidu gave me all their love and their love for Armenia as well. My mother Vatiter and her sister Nazi uh, were refugees after World War II, and they gave me uh, uh, the discipline and the and the faith together with my uh, together with my father, my wife Arminui, and my daughter uh, Shushi. Uh, those are the authorities of my life. So, as uh, in that case, that's the one authority that I recognize is the uh, the women in my family. Uh, and uh, and Arifsimet, thank you for your kind uh, kind thoughts. Uh, I do think that uh, the Armenian. Uh, man uh, has some work to do on himself. Uh, we have to overcome our uh, phobias, our complexes. Uh, we like to show ourselves around the table and uh, and so on uh, to show that you know we're, we're strong. But the strength is also in our love uh, for our for our women. Uh, and I get that from uh, my grand grandparents, uh, my grandmothers, my mother Varti and my wife Armin Lee, and my daughter Shushi. And so thank you. And I think it's a good opportunity to say that we love you. Uh, I'm not afraid to say it. We love our, the women in our lives, and we wish, uh, we wish that they, too, uh, would uh, 
find in their hearts uh, the ability to love back, even though sometimes uh, we do not do justice uh, to what you mean for our family and our nation. But uh, I think the, we're on we're on the on the route. Just in, during the first republic, we know that you know we, we say that all the time. I'm the son of Richard Hovannesian, so I know that during the first republic, when the United States did not have women's suffrage, the Republic of Armenia did. So we have we have a good basis for that, but we have to work harder to graduate beyond our false machoism and to have a truly integrated society where the woman uh, will be a leader in every walk of life. I think, no, the, the last question I was just going to ask that if you are trying to accomplish more than just disputing the presidential elections, for example, some people would suggest that you're, with your movement you're really uh, improving the political culture in Armenia. Did you have in your mind uh, this kind of uh, philosophy, you know, that you have to do something, you know, to... Are you missionary? <laughs> uh, I'm not a missionary, but uh, I, uh, with all with my fellow citizens, am on a mission. Uh, and uh, that mission is to see the day in my lifetime, uh, not in my... The, in the lifetime of my uh, grandchildren's grandchildren, in my lifetime, to see an Armenia uh, that is just, that is free, that respects its citizens, uh, that um, uh, that has the best education and health care and security system of, of the region and the world. Because I, I raised the flag at the United Nations on behalf of, uh, of generations of grandparents who saw genocide and saw dispossession and empires uh, and we're not able to see their own republic. So I raised that flag. I raised the flag on behalf of uh, children who are not yet born. And I want that flag to mean a lot more than just just flying, waving in front of the United Nations. I want it to represent the best possible nation in terms of democracy, citizen involvement, empowerment, women, education, health care, culture, and, and so on. Uh, and uh, I thank you for this last question. Because what I'm doing, or what I'm trying to do at least, is not to dispute anything. I don't dispute anything. Uh, and there's nothing to dispute, but I respect the victory of the people on February 18th. And I think it is uh, about time that Mr. Sarkisian and His Holiness, Catholicos of all Armenians, and everybody else who cares about our country, not dispute their own defeat, uh, but respect the will of the people. That will be the greatest legacy that all of us can leave for the future of Armenia. I look forward to a national unity on April 9th, and national unity not in terms of toasts and uh, and big banquets, uh, but national unity based on the law, based on the constitution, and based on the expectation of the Armenian people around the world. So with this, we will end our Google Hangout, the second okay. one with Rafael Marishan. Thank you very much. Thank you for the Hangout. That was fun. <laughs> we know that you know Thank you, you. Were very busy and you're preparing yourself for your own inauguration. <laughs> Not for my own, no. For, for, the, for the proclamation of new Armenia, which belongs to all of us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.